Hi friends! Welcome back to our channel. I'm Lena Lore. If you are new here, hello, hi, welcome. On this channel, we talk a lot about self-improvement, personal development, making money, saving money, personal finances, and overall just being a better you. So if you enjoy conversations like that, definitely subscribe and join the party. So I made a video talking about my corporate experiences, my honest corporate experiences. In that video, I talked about how I was able to land certain roles that technically I wasn't 100% qualified for. And I asked you guys if you wanted to see a video on that. You guys said yes, so here we are. A little bit of background on me, if you don't already know, my educational background is in accounting and finance. So ever since I've had my YouTube channel, I've always been in school full time and simultaneously working a nine to five job in accounting and finance. I had a role that specifically said minimum education required bachelor's degree and I was still in university and I wasn't graduating anytime soon. I still had a year and a half to go. I didn't lie about my education. In this role, I had people reporting to me that were twice my age, had been in the company and the industry for years. Crazy, but I think it's a combination of past experiences that I've had and transferable skills as well as little interviews hacks that allow the employer to feel confident in me and feel confident in their decision to hire me or to offer me the job. Although a lot of us are working our corporate jobs or our nine to fives with the hopes of building our own businesses, which is great to have the both of them simultaneously. You guys know I've said this in the past and I really do believe until you get to a place where your side hustle becomes your main hustle, you want a paycheck coming in from somewhere else. And if you're gonna be working somewhere, it might as well be a place that you enjoy working that you are not dreading to walk into every single day. So we're gonna get all of into this video. Hopefully it's not too long. Beyond the technical things like research the company before you go in and those kind of interview tips, I'm gonna be talking about the stuff that no one really ever talks about that are important when you show up at an interview. If you guys want me to do a video on the technical things that you can do, like how to answer interview questions and things like that, definitely let me know. I can 100% do a video on that. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about the things that no one talks about in an interview that are equally as important. So first things first, if you're even getting called in for the interview, that automatically tells you that the employer sees you as a viable employee or a viable candidate for the role. No employer is gonna wanna go through the hassle of inviting you to come in and sit through an awkward interview, no that they're not gonna hire you and that you're not even qualified for the role because not only is it awkward but it's a waste of time and resources and nobody wants to go through that on paper you seem like a great candidate what they're now looking for in person are the things that you can't read off of a piece of paper like your personality your presentation your mannerisms things like that i know sometimes it can be super nerve-wracking because you really want the role and then you end up being nervous which is counterproductive because now you're showing up really robotic and like weird and awkward you're not giving eye contact things like that and i think simply knowing that the employer already sees you as a good candidate for the role eases some of that stress and anxiety and some of those nerves and allows you to actually present yourself well in an interview. As long as you show up, you're friendly, you're pleasant, you're being yourself, your true authentic self, the person who is interviewing you is a human being and they're naturally going to gravitate towards the person that makes them feel most comfortable and feel most open and pleasant as opposed to the person who has everything on paper but comes in and is kind of arrogant or kind of closed off or very robotic. So just keep that in mind. The simple fact that they're even calling you in means that they already see you as a possible candidate and they just want to get to know you better. Tip number two is to dress yourself up. I know that it can sound so obvious, like you're going to a job interview, look presentable, but I do feel like this is something to mention because I worked for a startup company where the company was growing vastly. It was growing so quickly and we needed to hire more members of our accounting and finance team. So the finance manager and I were responsible for the first set of interviews and once they passed our screening then they had to do the final interview with the VP of finance and the president of the company. This company's target demographic was very like hipster, organic, vegan, sweaters and beanies, button downs with ripped up jeans kind of demographic. I hope I'm explaining this correctly but I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly but the point is that the typical customer was very casual chic. And you would be surprised, we actually had a handful of candidates who came in after screening their resume and them being a seemingly good fit, they came into their interview looking more like the customer than the person who would be hired to work in head office and close deals. First impressions are everything. So if you come into an interview and you look very casual, like you didn't really care about your appearance, you're subconsciously sending the message to the employer that I actually didn't really care for this interview this isn't really an important meeting or important event for me so I'm just coming as I am. Unfortunately 
absolutely this is not church you don't just come as you are you actually put yourself together and look like you're going somewhere important to you i worked in another role as well where my desk was very close to the talent acquisition manager who's basically the hiring manager for the company he would do a lot of different interviews for a lot of different branches and because our desks were so close and we got to know each other on a friend level he would debrief with me or basically unload on me <laughs> he would come and just be like oh that was a complete waste of time or he would say yo that interview went really well i think i've just found our new operations manager or something like that and i would ask him what made him a good candidate what made her a bad candidate and things like that and that gave me more of an insight on what employers look for when they're doing these interviews because that was his full-time role in every position he's been in in the past he's always been a hiring manager of some sort or talent acquisition he works in hr essentially he told me something once that was very interesting to me he told me that they use a three-point grading system so one is your qualifications on paper so your resume are you qualified for the role two is your appearance and hygiene and three is your communication and interpersonal skills so the first category was are you qualified a one would be no this person's not qualified let's just put the resume to the side there's too many applicants we can't like respond to everyone it's just no two was the person's kind of qualified but maybe not all the way there and three was absolutely this person's resume aligns perfectly with what we're looking for they would call the number threes in for an interview or do the phone interview first and the number twos they would only contact if they didn't have enough threes or if they interviewed the threes and it didn't work out with any of the threes next was the appearance and hygiene now this is something that a lot of people like to act like it doesn't matter but we are human and your appearance does unfortunately make a difference how you show up physically speaks for you before you even open up your mouth and i'm not saying your race or your gender i'm saying how you put yourself together three point grading system one was the person came in like jeans or leggings automatically that tells them yeah this person's probably not a good candidate they'll probably ask two or three questions and the interview's over Two is the person is dressed appropriately. However, they might have a stain on their blazer or their blouse is very wrinkled. What also fell into the two category was that their makeup, perfume, or cologne was too loud. Don't shoot the messenger, but the fact is, dousing yourself in perfume or cologne right before going into an interview is very off-putting now to you you might think your act smells amazing but depending on who you're interviewing with they might be very sensitive to smell and now your cologne or perfume is choking them <laughs> and now they're already irritated before the interview has even begun it can be abrasive to wear too much cologne or perfume so if you are going to wear cologne or perfume you know you can just do a little bit on the neck on the wrist or whatnot but you don't need to douse yourself in cologne and perfume before entering an interview also, ladies or gentlemen who wear makeup, loud makeup is not for an interview. Wearing loud, bold, colorful makeup in an interview sends the impression that you're not serious. It sends the impression that you are going to a party or a club or a nighttime event versus coming to the office to get business done or to get work done. I'm not saying do not wear makeup. You can wear as much makeup as you'd like to, but it should be the three ends. It should be neat, it should be neutral, and it should be natural looking. You could be wearing as many layers of foundation, mascara, eyeshadow as you want to, but does it look neat? Is it neutral? Does it look natural? Those are the three things you should ask yourself. You really could just wear mascara, but if you must wear falsies, you do not need bat wings on your eyes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we do not need the bat eyelashes for an interview. It just sends off the wrong impression. And it, like I said, it tells the interviewer that you are not really serious about coming here to work and do business. You're more so coming to play around, lollygag. This is not a club or a party. Now this is exclusive to like a corporate nine to five or basically any nine to five that isn't makeup or beauty related because I'm sure if you went into a Mac interview wearing false lashes is not a big deal or like having your highlight and contour be very bold and out there isn't a big deal it's not a bad thing at all because you're going in to become a makeup artist or to work in makeup or something like that but for every other type of profession you might want to keep the makeup to a minimum or on the natural neutral and neater side of things so that was the number two and then a number three was someone who just was on point with everything they dressed appropriately their outfit was crisp and neat their perfume or cologne wasn't too loud there weren't any stains or wrinkles their shoes are clean 
and they just look very professional and put together. So that was a three. And then the third category was their interpersonal skills and their communication, which we'll talk about later. So essentially what they were looking for was a three across the board. They wanted a three on a resume, they wanted a three on appearance and hygiene, and they wanted a three in their interpersonal and communication skills. So that brings us to our next tip, which is to treat the interview as more of a conversation than it is an interview. Think of it like you're gonna meet someone who you've been friends with on Instagram, you guys have liked each other's pictures a few times, and you're now meeting in person. Or it's like someone that you've met with on a dating app, on Tinder, maybe you guys both swipe left on each other. Or is it right? Is it right? Clearly, I don't know, friend, but you guys connected with each other. I like you, you like me, and that's why we're meeting up. And it's the same thing in a job interview. I like you, that's why I applied. You like me, that's why you called me in for this interview. On the date, you're trying to figure out do we like each other? Do we want to go on a second date? In the interview, it's do we like each other? Do we want to work with each other again? So it's the same kind of concept. Interviews are supposed to be more conversational than they are robotic. They hire people, not skills. So once you're able to show your true self is when they can't help but to hire you because you are a great person and you're very personable. People love you. One was the person was very rude and just not communicative and just pretty unpleasant. Absolutely zero eye contact. And two was that the person was answering all the questions, but there wasn't really a flow and it seemed a little bit robotic, but they answered the questions sufficiently. And three was that they answered the questions sufficiently and there was a flow and a natural connection and spark in the interview. Like the conversation organically progressed. It was pleasant, lighthearted, but the person still answered the question honestly and sufficiently. The candidate was also smiling often. There was eye contact and there were hand gestures. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. What do you think? people notice first when they meet someone. I'm gonna give you guys time. Okay, so if you answered eyes or smile, you are incorrect. Fun fact, studies show that the first thing people notice when they meet others are hands. Hand gestures suggest that this is a friendly, open environment. Since we're still on communications, we're gonna talk about the gestures. When you first meet an employer, handshake out, eye contact and a smile. It doesn't matter what race, gender, culture you're from, a smile is always inviting, it's always warm and welcoming, and no one is offended by a smile when you first meet them. So hand gesture out, handshake, smile, and eye contact. You're on the right track already. Now in the interview, when the employer is speaking, your facial gestures when you're not speaking still show that you're engaged. So we're gonna do the eyebrow raise when they mention something that seems impressive, like, oh, you know, our company we were the first people to ever da 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 da. Oh, no way. Or, oh, nice. And when they tell a joke, it's okay to laugh. You don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to do all that, but it's okay to let out a little bit of a, oh, no way. <laughs> Or when you're speaking and you say something that could be lighthearted, it's okay to smile. Eye contact and eyebrows up, raising your eyebrows when they're speaking. If you're gonna do Botox, don't freeze your brows, sis or bro. Don't do it, cause you need them in the interview. If you're gonna get the Botox, get it after. <laughs> or else you're not gonna be able to move your brows and they're gonna wonder, is this person sick? Are you not engaged in the conversation? You need to be here with them. You need to be engaged with them, okay? So those are just a few little gestures that you can do to show them that you're engaged and you're there. Also remember to keep the eye contact. It could feel awkward internally, but what's even more awkward is when someone is speaking to you and you're just looking down, looking to the side or looking off and things like that. It can be a little bit awkward. I mean, what else are you gonna look at when they're speaking to you anyway? They're talking to you, you're gonna it's no one else there. Eye contact shows that you're engaged and you're listening. Also, if you're, you know, raising the brows and nodding appropriately, you know, not every second, nod, nod, yeah, uh, you don't have to go crazy. Just showing that you're paying attention, you're engaged and you are present. So that brings me to my next point that oftentimes in an interview, the employer or the person interviewing you can be as nervous as you are, which is wild. You're probably thinking how they have all the power. They're the ones in charge of hiring, but but they're also sometimes under a lot of stress and anxiety and nerves as well. Sometimes they're introverts, but this is just a small part of their job description and they just have to. A lot of people who work in HR are actually introverts, believe it or not, but sometimes they don't want to interview a bunch of people. They find interviewing very awkward as well and they just have to do it to get through it. Also, they might have been looking for candidates for a very long time and they're just hoping that you're a great fit as well. So they're really nervous and trying to think of the proper questions to ask you so that they can vet to see if you are the right candidate. Also, going back to the point of if they're even calling you in, 
That means that they already see you as a viable employee or a viable candidate for the role. This means that sometimes before they go in, they have such high expectations of you as well. And they're hoping that you just see the company in a positive light and that you want to work for them as well. They're hoping that you want the job as much as they want you in the job. And then also a lot of times they're under pressure for a company to have a vacancy in a role for too long is bad because it slows down the operations of the company. They're usually under pressure from their managers or the manager of the position they're filling. And they're trying to be effective and efficient in a small amount of time they're trying to quickly hire someone for that role but at the same time they need it to be the right person so they're going through all these things on their end as well just hoping you're the right candidate and they're also very nervous too they want to showcase the company in a positive light they want to entice you and make you want to work for the company as well although you have to show up and kind of prove yourself that you are a great fit for the company, they're also trying to prove to you that they are a company that you even want to work for. Imagine you show up for an interview thinking like, this is my dream job. The interview just goes terrible. The interviewer is a jerk. He's talking about how everyone works like 12 hours a day and there's no like work-life balance. There are no company events. This is just a crappy company. He's just telling you about how sucky the company is. Would you still hold the company in such a high regard and would you still want to work there? Probably not as much. So they have an obligation as well coming into the interview that they want to showcase the company in a good light. They also want to hire the perfect candidate. They're also under certain time restraints. And so they've got a lot on their plate as well. So I think knowing this also helps to ease the stress and nerves on your end and essentially helps you to be more of you in the interview because you're less nervous and less anxious knowing that you're not the only one who's trying to show up and put your best foot forward in this interview. They are also trying to do the same thing as well. Oftentimes they want you in the role as bad as you want the role. So essentially you guys are on reciprocal ends of the same issue and lastly very generic and cliche but be you honestly when you try to be something else that you're not it could come off very robotic and unless you're a really good actor or actress i wouldn't recommend this because it is detectable get your vibe and your energy correct before stepping into an interview sometimes it's important for you to do something that has your spirits and your energy up before coming into the interview so that you're not subconsciously thinking about negativity what i like to do is so the night before i'll go over potential job interview questions that could be asked of me respective of the role that i'm stepping into or I'm interviewing for and then in the morning I listen to my gospel I listen to my positive affirmations I listen to R&B on the drive over I get my spirits up I listen to like a funny podcast I listen to comedy something that has me in a very positive and uplifting mood so that naturally and organically when I do originally meet the hiring manager or whoever's interviewing my spirits already in a positive space my energy my aura my spirit is already super positive I'm already super happy and naturally I'm just stepping forward with my best positive foot you know because I'm already in a positive space once again I have to reiterate the fact that you're even getting called in means that you are already a candidate and now they just want to see you you are enough you are a great person to be around you exude positivity and happiness and what's for you will always be yours so if you step into the interview just being your authentic true happy self and you keep in mind these things that I've mentioned there's no way that you you wouldn't land the role and if you don't then it's simply because you're going to land something even better so hopefully that video was helpful to at least one person i know this video is super long and i apologize so if you guys made it to the end of the video comment down below end of video gang on wednesday i'm going to be uploading a video on survival tips on how to survive the corporate environment once you get the job because you will be getting the job or if you already had a job and you need survival tips because you feel like you're going crazy in that place i will be uploading a video on survival tips on Wednesday so be on the lookout for that video turn on your notifications if they're not already turned on I love you guys so 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 much love you to the moon in fact be true to you Mwah. bye